Well, it's been a while since I've been back in the shop. Um, got my 1994 Jeep Grand Cherokee here, uh, getting ready to put a lift on it. Um, I went and bought, it was a three and a half country lift kit. Um, I also got some end links and a uh, transfer case drop from Iron Rock Off-Road and from Rough Country, I got the uh, front, uh, why are the words not coming to me? Sway bar disconnect right there. Um, and then these two boxes right here, the complete lift kit, it was quite pricey. Um, I'll go ahead and get this all unboxed, laid out on a different table, and I'll show them to you. Well, here it all is laid out on the table. Um, so here's the rear sway bar in links. I already have the transfer case drop installed. Um, I got to deal with this transmission leak, but here they are. They're just uh, solid pieces of anodized aluminum. Um, don't stand out that much compared to the little pucks that go in there. And here's all the hardware and all that for the uh, the front sway bar disconnects. Um, I went ahead and I got the uh, it was supposed to be the softer riding shocks. Um, I can't remember which one. So they had the 8,000. They had a different number, like 8010 or something weird. Um, but anyway, the shocks, the boots, and all of the uh, the hardware for that. Um, we got four coils, four new coils. The cheaper kits you can go with, um, you can reuse the front coils on the rear to get, get your lift. Um, I just wanted to do all four, do it right, make it look pretty. Um, then we've got uh, control arms, control arm bushings, more bushings, hardware, stickers and instructions. And then um, I believe these are track bar relocation brackets. Um, you might be asking, is all this necessary to lift a Jeep Grand Cherokee ZJ three and a half inches? Absolutely not. Um, I went and got one of the more expensive kits on the market. Um, the cheaper kits have a lot less hardware, um, and there's you know different variations of stuff. And I just kind of combined a couple kits to get pretty much everything you can put on to get a three and a half inch lift, inch lift on these guys. Um, I think I spent. Gosh, I'm going to pull a, nope, I'm not even going to say a number. I'm going to put it right here. Right, right there. When I get around to editing the video with the number. Um, but it wasn't cheap. It absolutely wasn't cheap. And while I was at it, I bought this a few months ago. And while I was at it, I'll tires, go to the storage room here. Um, went with these guys. I can't even remember what they are anymore. Uh... Of course, I can't even see it. Anyway, I'll put all that information in there too when I get around to editing it. Um, pretty nice tire. Found a deal on them, getting all five, so I can mount tire on the spare wheel there, and then all four. But yeah, let's get into it. So I messed up and I put the wrong jack stand there, so I swapped that out so that everything's the same height. It's sitting a lot less sketchy now. Now I, what I wanted to show you, the reason I, I went so expensive on the lift kit is that the condition of this Jeep is ridiculous. So this has 230 something thousand miles on it. And check out the frame on it. It is spotless. If we go under here. It is still got the factory paint, not a speck of rust. Um, it truly is a rare sight to be seen. These things love to rust out real bad. Um, I think this is the fifth one that I've had. And this is by far the best. They like to rust out real good right here. Um, pretty much this whole arc right here. They get bad behind these panels. Um, you can see that's just brand spanking still right there. So yeah, this is a, a really good Jeep. It's got a couple of blemishes. It's got a nice little scratch there and a little scuff there. That'll buff out. That one's a little bit too deep to be buffed. But I mean, overall, this thing is an incredibly 
good condition. Got my historical plates on it because this is a historical vehicle. But yeah, time to start lifting. So the first thing to do is to uh, disconnect the shock. On the driver's side, it sucks, um, or at least sucks a little bit more than the passenger side. Ah, passenger side's easy. There's the top of it right there. You can get access to it with an impact and beep, out of there. Let's see, driver's side, I don't even know if I can get this on camera real good. Let's see, it's that right there. You can kind of see the bottom of that washer there. The bolt is covered by a shadow, but I need to get access to that then the shock will be able to drop out. Um, you got these two bolts here and the shock comes out. So I was able to get this guy off with uh, the impact. Um, I just used my six inch extension, a uh, wobbly bit and uh, 14 mil, a deep well 14. Uh, came in at this angle, came on off. Uh, that side, since I already had the tool out, Go ahead and zip that off nice and easy so now i have the fun part of getting these guys off i got my 13 mil socket just sitting on there right now already um sometimes these suck but i mean with how rust free this thing is it shouldn't be too bad So you need this 13 millimeter wrench to get up under there. Oh well. So next up on the list is to remove this uh, this bracket bolt here. It's a Torx. I can't remember what size. I'm gonna go ahead and guess. What is this? Uh, 45. Let's guess 45. No, it's a 40. So I went ahead and removed the end link because I'm putting those quick disconnects on anyway. So yeah, you get this guy, this guy, once both sides are free, that just, you can get that nice and out of the way. Um, so you don't have to deal with that anymore. But yeah, next I think uh, is getting that track bar bracket. So now we're on the passenger side. We need to get rid of the, uh, the steering stabilizer here at the axle. And then also right here is the uh, the track bar lower mount uh, bolt. Um, I got my big impact to hopefully make things a little bit easier. By the way, I would highly recommend investing in an 18 millimeter solid wrench. Um, I had to buy this on Amazon by itself. It was like 12 bucks because not a single set out there for some whatever reason has 18 millimeters in their sets. So I got that one and it has saved me so much trouble. I also on the same order got a gear wrench, 18 millimeter um, ratcheting wrench. Um, Absolutely well worth the money, um, even though it's the you know the same price as a Harbor Freight set for just one wrench. Absolutely worth it. 
So now that the uh, track bar is out of the way uh, and the steering stabilizer, the instructions tell you to go ahead and mark the uh, adjustment cam here. So I just put a little red paint marker across there on both sides. Um, so the next step is to remove these two bolts, drop that out on both sides, and then it's on to springy time. So now that I got the track bars out, um, just got to get this guy right, oh, that's the light, right underneath that, uh, that wheel speed sensor bracket. Um, that's the spring retainer. Pop that out, drop the axle down, and the springs will just fall on out. So these are the uh, front lower control arms. Um, it says in the instructions to find the PL1s. So this is a 43900PL1. Um, two of these go in the rear of the vehicle, and then the rest of these go on all four um, control arms. So I'll go ahead and do the. Did I say that wrong? think so towards the rear of the vehicle okay yeah these go to the rear these go to the front so you got to mark that I'll go get my paint marker so I can keep track so I think so these are symmetrical it all depends on uh, which one of these bushings you put in so I'm gonna mark each one F and R for front and rear just so I can keep everything straight. So, the rear of the vehicle gets these guys. So I'll go ahead and pop these guys out. Go get some lube. Now it says use um, lithium or molly. I'm gonna use this Shell Rotella heavy duty grease. I use this on everything. Um, it's got a picture of a tractor on it, so you know it's good. It's also got an excavator and a semi truck. I don't, I don't care about that Prius. I don't know why they put a Prius on it, but these other three, I trust these other three.
what's what. The instructions aren't very clear. They say that there's, um, nope, nope, doesn't say anything about the part number on the sleeves. But it looks like there's a couple of different flavors. That's not very convenient. Oh, those are different too. That's neat. All right, so we got two of these. These must go to the fronts. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Those go to the rest. I don't know what these are for. No clue. We're gonna tuck them back in here like they don't exist. You still there? Oh, bud. That was rough. So I got the uh, lower control arm done on both sides. You can see it over there on the other side. Um, gotta say, it was difficult. Uh, you're gonna fight with it. It's probably best to have somebody there with you um, to give you a little helping hand. It was really difficult doing it solo. Um, but next step is to do the uh, front track bar relocation bracket. That's this guy. Uh, the kit comes with two. Uh, the front is the smaller one. They have a really helpful illustration here in the instructions right here. 
So it's illustration number two. Uh, it shows that it's a smaller one. You have to drill this hole. Um, so they say throw it in with this bolt, line it up, drill this hole, um, and then they give you all the hardware and stuff for it. So these washers that it comes with do not fit on the 10 millimeter bolt that they give you. They're 3 8 washers um, instead of 10 mil washers and they just don't fit. So I went in my little hardware drawer and I found this and that'll get the job done. So you need this. They, have, they also have two uh, anti-crush sleeves. They don't really tell you which one's which but the smaller one goes on the front, not the bigger one. The rear gets a 12 millimeter bolt instead of the 10 millimeter bolt. Um, so you get the smaller anti-crush sleeve. But I'm going to go ahead and get that thrown on, get the hole drilled, and I'll show you how it looks. See, so yeah, I hear the uh, track bar relocation bracket is uh, mounted up. You use the factory bolt here, the supplied bolt here, and then you drill a hole here and use the uh, fa uh, supplied nut and bolt. Um, this was another thing that really sucked. Uh, I got a ratchet strap going to my tow hook here to help center up the axle. Um, to where this bracket has the track bar. Um, it was a lot of effort. I had to bend this bracket a little bit, bend this bracket a little bit. Uh, but it went together. It wasn't nearly as bad as the, uh, the control arms. So I got that going for me. But yeah, on to the next piece. So the next thing to do is the, uh, the brake line relocation bracket. Um, that's this guy. After messing with the bracket for a little bit, it straight up just doesn't work. Um, I don't know if I just didn't play with it enough or what, so I just put the factory bolt back in. Same hardware or whatever. There's plenty of slack in this line at full droop. Um, plenty of slack here. I'm not worried about it. Um, this thing isn't ever going to see dirt, so whatever. It'll be alright. Um, I guess I should slide that back up. Anyway, um, go ahead and do the other side just the same way from the factory and move on to the next step. So to finish up the front here, um, it's just shocks, uh, steering stabilizer, and in my case, uh, the front sway bar quick disconnects. Um, I, don't, I think you can still get away with using the factory uh, sway bar end links, or you might even be able to go get away with um, going without a sway bar entirely. Uh, depends on what you're going for. I want a really smooth ride uh, on road and then if this thing were to go off road uh, then the disconnects would really help there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up and then show you what it looks like when it's done. Well today is two days later. Um, I was out here pretty late the, uh, the night before um, getting this wrapped up. It took longer than I thought but I got the front finished up. Um, had to do the shocks twice because I'm dumb and forgot to put the, oops, forgot to put the boot on. Um, so I had to take the shocks off, put the boot on, put the shocks back on. Um, had a real fun time putting these, uh, end links on. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm the way I am or if it really was kind of a pain to do, but it's all ready to go in the front. Um, when I get weight back on it, uh, I got to tighten or I have both these bolts tightened, so I need to loosen them, tighten them back up, make sure everything is clocked the right way under weight, and then I have to double check the adjustment on uh, on the sway bars to make sure everything's all good there. But other than that, um, that's just that's later stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the back. Um, out of laziness, I'm just gonna do it all and then show you how it looks when I'm done because it's pretty much identical to what I did up there, just here. So I'm gonna get to it and show you how it looks. So I just finished up with the rear. Um, it was much easier than the front. I still need to secure this uh, inner liner up, but um, yeah, everything went butter smooth. These are the, uh, the new end links. The factory end links are pretty much two fingers tall. This is much longer than that fingers for reference I guess but um, lower control arm 
much easier on the rear than the front. The uh, the track bar, let me tell you, let me show you what the hardest part was. Um, and it wasn't really even hard, it was just annoying. So here's the, uh, the relocation bracket right here. You can kind of tell right there where the, um, the hole that came in it is. So I had to pop it on the drill press and put a new hole. It was about three quarters of a hole off. So that really sucked. I just uh, did the best I could to drill a half inch hole here. Um, and then I filed it into a slot. Um, and then another hard, annoying piece is still with this bracket. On the other side here, I'll change views. So on the other side here, let's get a light on it. Let's see. Is that the light button? It sure is. So this bolt right here um, bolts it down to the top side of this. So you've got the factory bolt going through with a spacer there, a factory bolt here, or a, a, a 5 8 bolt here, and then a 5 8 bolt on the bottom side coming in this way. But this guy, I had to remove the, uh, the upper control arm so I could get a wrench on the back side of this um, to tighten it down. Um, I debated not even using this, but I figured a little bit stronger is a, a lot of bit better. So I went ahead and I just sucked it up and did it. Um, removing the upper control arm on my Jeep wasn't too bad. Uh, if you've got a rust bucket, it's easier just to not do this. Um, but yeah, other side looks the same. I'll turn that light off. Um, but yeah, overall pretty easy. Um, the front was much worse than, than the rear. But time to throw some tires on it, or throw the factory wheels back on it. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the factory wheels, throw those aftermarket tires on. Tomorrow, I'll go up to Discount Tire, get that taken care of, and uh, yeah, I'll film a little outro then, show you how the Jeep looks on the real tires. I might need to put spacers on it. Um, I was just waiting until everything was done to make the call on spacers um, just just to get a little bit of stance I guess if the if you're lifted and they're tucked in they kind of look bad um, I guess it's personal preference but I don't know uh, I guess I'll pick the phone back up tomorrow take another video and then that'll do her Well, I got the new tires put on the Jeep here, um, and it looks great around here. Um, I think I'm going to leave that exactly how it is. Um, no spacers or anything. I like the way it kind of tucks in there. I'm trying to keep a, a classy look to this guy instead of, you know, nice and stancy uh, like I normally would. But I think that's a, a pretty appropriate amount there. And these tires are, they should be pretty good in the snow or anything. I don't know if I'll drive it in the snow and the salt and stuff around here, but who knows? It'll be great for the next guy for sure. However he chooses to use it. But yeah, with that, I'm going to end this video. Um, thanks for watching. And there's definitely going to be some more stuff on this Jeep. I got to do a headliner and um, a couple of other miscellaneous things, so... I'll keep you posted.